Hey growers, this is a PAR meter, also known as a quantum meter. Now, if you've ever wondered if your indoor garden is bright enough or how far your lights should be from your plants, then this is the gadget you've been looking for. The Sun System PAR meter is really easy to use. You switch it on, remove the remote sensor cap, and hold the sensor level with the plant canopy like this. The PAR meter has two modes, outdoors and electric. Outdoor mode is for measuring natural sunlight, and electric mode is for grow lights. I'm growing my beloved lavender here under a Sun Systems Yieldmaster Classic Reflector in a grow tent with a growing area of just over 15 square feet. Inside the reflector is a 1000 watt ultra sun metal halide lamp, rich in blue lights for growing plants. This lamp has been fully run for well over 100 hours. I'm using a Galaxy electronic ballast connected to a Helios 7 lighting controller by Titan Controls. Note that the Galaxy is set to 100% power. Now, while the Galaxy has a dimming capability, this isn't recommended for metal halide lamps. Okay, so let's try out the Sun System PAR meter. Holding it level with the top of the lavender plant, directly beneath the lamp at a distance of... 24 inches. I'm reading in the high 500s, peaking at 600. Don't worry, I'll explain what these numbers represent in just a second. If I hold the sensor out here, toward the corner of the grow tent, the numbers go down significantly, around the 3 to 400 mark. And, just for fun, if I hold the sensor up really close to the lamp, wow, look at that, we are nudging 2,000. So, what are these numbers? Well, they're called micromoles, and it's a way of quantifying light intensity, or how many photons of light are arriving at a given point. Zero means you've forgotten to turn the lights on. 1500 is about the limit in terms of what most light-loving plants can handle. If you're growing under a single grow light, you should be reading at least 500 micromoles. If you have multiple grow lights, 700 is a realistic goal. Now obviously these are just general guidelines because it really depends on the species of plant you're growing. So judging from these readings, I think I can safely lower my Yield Master Classic Reflector by a few inches, just to raise those numbers a little. I'm also going to move the taller plants to the edges of my grow space. But remember, grow lights emit heat as well as light, and if a plant heats up too much, it basically shuts down and stops processing, well, any photons at all. So growing under grow lights is all about finding that sweet spot where the light is just far enough away so that the plant doesn't become too warm, but it's close enough to be receiving the greatest amount of photons. If, like me, you don't have an infrared thermometer on hand to measure the temperature of the leaf surface, a budget workaround is to hold the back of your hand level with the plant canopy right underneath the light. If your light's not too close, you should be able to leave it there for about a minute without your skin feeling like it's warming up. Next time, we'll repeat the test using an air-cooled reflector and explore the associated pros and cons. Until then, take care my green-thumbed friends. This is Everest, out. For grow tips, expert advice, and tons more videos, check out JustForGrowers.com, the global garden community.